The world of sport is always exciting, never stops, never quits. The action is continental, national, global, and you can be sure that we will bring you every single sport team action right here on this show. You call it Game On, we call it Monday Night Magic. Hello and welcome to Game On, coming to you from the studios of New Central Television. My name is Babati Nekoiki. Thank you so much for joining us. I've had a wonderful weekend, and I'm sure my co anchors here have also had a really interesting weekend, so we'll be getting to them soon. But before we do, don't forget we're streaming live on YouTube, and of course, using our social media handles X, Instagram, anyone you want to use, is right there for you. And of course, you know the handle at News Central TV. Welcome once again. Promise to be a great show. And let me quickly start by introducing the two people with me in the studio. To my immediate right, it cannot get even better. It cannot even get even lovelier than Onye Obaro. <laughs> Always a pleasure to have you on the show. Always a pleasure to sit here by the table. You yes, know, yes. Nice. But Nice to be here. Bringing her 5,000 watt smile to the show. <laughs> and of course, bringing a, do I say, a very interesting take on a lot of issues that we'll be discussing tonight. And of course, to my far right is a man I have tremendous respect for because he's not only a good friend of mine, but he's also the deputy editor of Sporting Life newspaper, one of Nigeria's finest flagship, uh, flagship publications, Onyin Wuchinwa Chuku, makes a return tonight as well. Thank you so much. You were missing in action last week. I think you got a head start on the Easter weekend. No, not, not really. You know, mm. I, I just came back from Ghana, so mm. I needed need to, you know, start getting used to some situations. I just, I just you know, Adjustment back. here and there. Mm. You know, when Jet lag? Well, no, 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 I, I know what you're going. Whether it's Ghana, <laughs> Australia, or UK, any travel is a travel. It is travel. Okay, okay. So, we'll, so, so I'm trying to get used to the situation. Yeah, I'm right, trying to reacclimatize. Yeah, and, I, and by the way, I, I, I think um, it's good that we're having a year in the middle. Why? You know, because uh, you were not in any danger from me. No, no, you see, she, she, she brings a lot of uh, balance, you know, balance, balance. Mm -hmm. yeah. and attraction mm -hmm. okay. to and, the show. Uh, yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah. I, I, I take it that I understand what you're saying. <laughs> well, let's move on very quickly on the show. It's a promise to be very interesting, but we start in a, in a, in a great fashion, and that's with athletics. And uh, this news coming out of the United States of America hit us with like a bolt out of the blue. Favor Ashe, Nigeria, has become the fastest man in the world this year. Yes, Favor Ashe, he's competing in his first outdoor meet and his second overall in 2024 instantly uh, struck the Olympic standard by recording a fast world lead of 9.99 seconds, the fastest man in the world this year so far, becoming the first man to run a sub-10 seconds this season. Now, that is incredible news, uh, considering the fact that this young man had actually been going through this time last month. Mm. This was not the case for Favor Ashe, but he was in blistering form, showing great, great potential. And if, if he can record this kind of a fast time so early in the season, only, know, only God knows what, what uh, the, the rest of the season might hold, not forgetting that we do have an Olympic Games coming up in the summer. And if that was good, take a look at this. Also, this, uh, this uh, weekend as well, in the Battle of the Bayou, that's uh, an in, uh, invitation that took place in North America as well, one of Nigeria's finest female athletes as well, Favor of Philly, another favor, blazed to her fastest time of 10.85 seconds uh, ahead of uh, Brianna Liston, who was a teammate when uh, she came second in 10.87 seconds, and Mackenzie Long came third in 10.89 seconds. Stunning performance after she ran. This came just barely minutes after running a terrific ankle leg for her team that saw her come from third place to win the women's 4 by 100 meters in a time of 42.78 seconds. Now, if this is anything heartwarming, uh, more heartwarming than this, this weekend, considering the fact that we have an Olympic Games coming up in just a few months, I cannot think of anything even better. But joining us now, all the way from Atlanta, the United States of America, is a very good friend, friend of mine, is also an athletics expert to the core. I'm talking about the country manager of Making of Champions, Nigeria's fastest um, athletics, uh, sports management, media, and events company. He joins us all the way from ATL, that's Atlanta, DJ Ogengbo. Thank you so much for joining us, DJ. Good to see you. Now, let's start with Favor Ashe. Big, big surprise. Just a few, four weeks earlier, this was not the favor actually that we knew. He was in major, major trouble. And in the space of four weeks, things seemed to have turned around. What happened? Thank you for having me today. It's a pleasure once again. Well, um, favor is, well, over there is the word an enigma. And um, people that know him off the track know his sort of personality. But I mean, since we're just focused on what's happening on the track, uh, nobody has ever doubted his talent um right from when he was discovered in 2018 
um, to going to the United States on an athlete scholarship in 2021, starting pretty well with the indoor season, coming close to breaking Nigeria indoor record. Even at, at the start of this season, he ran the fastest indoor race over 60 meters, 6.53 seconds. So his talent has never been in doubt. Last year, he set a new personal best of 9.96 seconds, but sadly at the World Champs in Budapest, he all started. And we couldn't see if at full glare what he could do. I mean, he had obviously got to the semifinals of the 100 meters at the um, World Championships in Oregon in 2022. Um, he also made the final of the um, um, of the Commonwealth Games in 2022. So um, I'm not surprised that he could easily, easily breeze through 999. Uh, but let's not get ahead of ourselves. Uh, the Olympic qualifying standard is uh, 10 seconds. Uh, mm. So you expect uh, nothing less than perhaps 40 to 50 athletes to get across that mark this year. And that's how And, and Favre, Favre's uh, personal best itself is 9.96 seconds. So this is really easy for him as it were. Yes, it is. Um, but I'm even looking at it at a global scale, right? It's the world lead now. I was writing about it a couple of hours ago. Um, you expect it to fall in another, say, seven days when a couple of meets happen um, around the world next um, uh, this weekend. Um, so but, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm looking at it from more of the perspective of how consistent favor needs to be and how its potential could be at full glare. Just so you know, um, at the World Juniors in 2021, um, he, he was entered in the 100 meters alongside um, Gosson Brumem, um, then the famous Leslie Tebogo, which Tebogo eventually went on to win. Um, Ashi had um, an injury that in Nairobi in 2021, and he couldn't compete, but we knew his talent. He's at the level of Tebogo, right? Mm -hmm. um, same thing with Gosson Brumem, same thing with Udodi. They're all in the same age cadets. Udodi has been having a bit of injury, like we just talked about now, Ashi having a bit of off track issues too. So it's that consistency that is key. Um, if you can put all of those um, off-track off issues um, to bed and focus on the track, this is a potential 9-8 runner. So hopefully he's able to consistently go on, go on to compete the SEC championships, the NCA this year. Um, last year he couldn't make the NCA because of he copped an injury prior to uh, competing there. But the year before he had finished second behind Joseph Fombule in 2022 so his potential is just he hasn't really touched up to half of it right mm -hmm. and i feel this is just um, um um a time to wait our appetite and he could do certainly more this year okay uh, i mean dg um you, this is an athlete that you know very well discovered right here in nigeria trained by one of nigeria's fastest uh, uh, men ever i'm talking about dg aliwa who's also an exceptional sprint coach but uh, he, you said his talent is not in doubt we agree uh, regarding that but has he solved those off-track issues that you mentioned? He was had a run-in with the law uh, last month. Has that been resolved? Well, um, I mean, according to what I heard, Les, it's the investigation is still going on, right? Um, the, the rules al along the um, NCAA is very complex, and this is kind of like a one-off. But one thing you should know is top college athletes here in the state have got some preference um, especially when it goes to wranglings with the law, right? And with the issue of Ashe, his school needs him. Um, he competes for Auburn. He started with University of Tennessee. Um, he's arguably their best sprinter, and they need to win points win point on the table, right? But so far, so good. Investigation is still going on. Hopefully, it's one that sorted out. And I was speaking to um, a trial coach in Florida um, a couple of days ago, and he's young, right? Um, he will make these mistakes, he needs to learn lessons, uh, but obviously it's the support system that is crucial for him at this point in time, um, up until the federation level, right, people that keep in touch with him and just to ensure that he's got um, a level ed. Not everybody will be exceptionally brilliant, mm. um, but I feel that support system in a, in a very competitive sport like track and getting to the professional level is very key and people actually need to understand that. Okay, uh, let's leave Fivashi uh, behind and let's wish him the very best. I hope that those uh, off-track troubles will be resolved as soon as possible, but I think the principle of the law is that you are innocent until proven guilty beyond reasonable doubt. Like you said, the investigations are going on. But let's move to another fascinating athlete. I'm talking about favor of Philly, another favor, as it were. It seems to be the season of favors. Um, <laughs> interesting athlete. Even she runs the 400 meters, has the record for the Nigerian 300 meters, uh, has also won a blistering 10.87, uh, um, I mean 10.85 meters in 100 meters. She seems to be able to do everything. So 
what exactly is her specialty? Because I get confused at times. Is she a quarter miler or is she a sprinter? Well, I mean, they are all sprinters. It depends on the event. But um, one thing, obviously, like you know, um, sprinters have got their specialty, despite them being able to do 100, 200, True. 400. But it's very rare to find the ones that are actually good at all three. And that's why you mostly see 100, 200 meter runners or Deji, 200 or 400. She's good at all four. She's good at 100 meters, so, 200 meters, 300 meters, where she has the African indoor record, I believe, and 400 meters. Well, I mean, be, be, being good is relative, right? Um, jack of all trades. Um, that, that's something that you need to also understand. Um, so being good at all three, you would perhaps put from the men's side, only three athletes perhaps have done a sub 10, a sub 20, and a sub 44. Um, that's um, the great win for Nikirk. Um, what's his name now? Michael Norma. And just recently, let's let the book work. Mm. Um, well, he didn't enter that exclusive list because he just ran in 44 seconds, right? But for Ash, for, for Philly, I've spoken to our coach Shea well, when she was in, um, when, when she was still in um, school um, at LSU, Louisiana State University. And he, he thinks Favor actually. Um, specialty event is the 200 meters and mm. i also agree with him because she's already, already done the sub 22 right now seeing that she's done the sub um the 10 points uh, sub 11 here let's not forget that the win reading is 2 plus 2.6 so um it doesn't really count can she medal at the world level in the other meters certainly not now can she medal in the 400 meter at the world level she would need to run a sub 50 seconds to be in that category can she medal at the 200 meters absolutely yes I mean, just about two years ago, she went head to head with Abby Steiner, um, running slow 22 seconds. And I mean, if you look at the winning times or the times to get to, to the final of the World Championships, uh, the major event, you would need to run a 22 low or perhaps a 21 seconds. And Favor Philly is capable of doing that too. So I think it's just more of an appetizer. Um, she, she, um, she's testing the waters to test her speed. If you are good in the 200 meters, you run a lower 100 meters to ensure your speed is still there. If you are a better 20 meter runner, you will run the 100 meters to keep you with your endurance and also work on your speed. So it depends. Um, if you want to do the 400 meters, um, you might just also do the 200 meters and 100 to work on your speed. And the reverse is the case. So I, I honestly don't see Favor hopefully doing the 100 meters um, this season. Uh, similar to how we saw Simbine, Akane Simbine running 200 meters against um, Let's see, Let's Bogo last week at the South Africa um, ESA Grand Prix. Mm. It's it's not something that, that I would expect him to do for the rest of the season, perhaps for just a one-off, right? So I think for Philly, she would double down, go back to her specialist event, the 200 meters, and solidify her status there as one of the best in the world this year. Mm. Okay. We'll be keeping an eye on both these athletes, uh, Favor Ashe and Favor uh, Ophelia, uh, two favors. Uh, but thank you to our own favorite, DG uh, Ogebo, who joined us also from Atlanta uh, to give a shed more light and add more color to exactly what has happened to Nigerian athletics this weekend. Thank you so much, DG. I'll be catching up with you pretty soon. It's a pleasure today. Have a great day. Okay. Well, guys, uh, let's uh, move on very quickly from one sprint, two sprint sensations to another one who joins us live all the way from uh, Canada. Uh, I'm talking about the man who just won a silver medal at the All Africa Games in the men's 100 meters, but also walked away with a gold medal in the men's 4 by 100 meters, one of Nigeria's fastest sprinters right now. Uh, it is our honor to uh, welcome to the show Ushel Rishe Ishekiri. Thank you so much for joining us. It's uh, really nice to see you. But for those who have always wondered about your name, first question out of the blog could you just translate what that first name means? A lot of people say that it's thank God or it's the grace of God. Ushel Risha, what does it mean? It means the handwork of God. The handwork of God. Hey, I, 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 I'm not questioning that. It, definitely the handwork of God was definitely evident on you at the uh, Africa Games. Congratulations on winning a gold medal in the men's 4x400 meters. I know that individual gold medal is still eluding you, but I'm sure you must be feeling delighted with yourself at a great competition uh, in, in Accra. Yes, yes, it was really good. The the gold medal was really good to have. Yeah, it was a good competition for me. I'm happy with the results. Okay. Uh, um, I, I want to ask, uh, some of us have said that uh, Nigeria's sprint dominance, uh, especially in the short sprints, the 100 meters, the 200 meters, seems to be waning in terms of the men's sprint effort. But when you look at people like yourself, and um, Ishakiri has uh, a bigger part in our favor, Asha as well. Uh, there's also Udodi as well. 
it seems as if there's a new crop, a new breed coming through that seems to bring Nigeria back onto the, onto the front burner. Do you agree with that? Yep, yep. The new sprinters coming up, is, they're spicing things up. We've had a couple of sub tens every year, and we usually we don't have that. So, yes, Udodi, Ashe, Godson, Alaba, those are they're pretty good, right? right? So, they're spicing up things, and things are getting heated up every year. And now we have two other guys that were at the African Games, Alika and Consider. So, you have those people also spicing up things from from Lagos in Nigeria. So, we have a really good quartet this year. And I say the sprint is, the sprint is going to be really tough this year. Mm. Okay. Okay, Avisha Rishi, I remember the conversation with you concerning the perfect pair for Nigeria's 4 by 100 quartets. Yes, we're able to see you guys go with that revenge mission against Ghana at the African Games. It was a photo finish. How were you able to go by experience ahead of that Ghanaian in the 4 by 100 meters? I would say it felt like deja vu, but I just wanted it more than Joseph, right? So, basically... <laughs> I know. I I think we got the bet on almost the same time, but I've been indoors because we have snow in Canada. So I have like I have a really good 60 at the moment, but my last 40 is not yet there. So I was able to prioritize. I knew I was going to blow past Joseph in the first 60, but the, the problem was the last 60. So I did my I did a good job in the first 60, and I knew I knew Joseph was going to come. I just needed to hold on till he got there. So I was holding on, and I could see Joseph pressing on me on my shoulders, and I was like, Joseph, not today. Not today. This, this is not happening. So it was like, this is, and felt like it's my chance to get a gold medal. At first, I don't know if I would ever, I don't know if this chance would ever be there again. So it felt like my chance to get a gold medal, and I was like, I'm not letting this go. So I did what I could do in the first 60, and I know the last 40 was for Joseph. So it was just me on the line and Joseph who wanted it more. Hmm. Okay. Would you say this is the perfect pair for Nigeria's 4x100? Let me hear from you. Yeah, I can't really say it's a perfect pair because hmm. I always go with the fastest guys to run. So one thing is to run fast somewhere. The conditions are different for everybody. Like we still have snow in Canada. If I go out to run now, I'll probably run something really slow, slower than what I run in, in Accra. Hmm. So... We can't say that national trials would come, people would run. You can take an average of people's performance to know where they are, at, and those are the guys I feel should be fielded. But I always feel the fastest guys should run because everyone feels the fastest people on the team, on their own legs. And we, I've been in a team once with sentiments that we had people run that were not, that were not actually the fastest. They were merited to be on the team, but we had faster guys that were not being fielded, and that didn't go well. So I always said the fastest guys should run. Mm -hmm. So come July, come at the Olympics, the fastest guys, the four fastest guys should be on the track. Okay. Well, Ishakir, congratulations, uh, by the way. I was in, in Accra for the African Games, and we were all proud of what okay. you guys did. You know, you lived up to expectation. Because according to the records, um, Team Nigeria has always won athletics events only once. Uh, they failed to win the athletics event at the African Games. So going forward, just a few months to the Paris Olympic Games, what kind of support, what kind of support system will you guys require from the Athletics Federation of Nigeria you know, to get to the podium? Mm -hmm. Because um, that's, it's a different ball game, um, you know, winning at the continent. At the Olympics level, is, is, I mean, you are, you are going to be competing against the best. So what do you want from the AFN moving forward? The first thing I want to say is support. It's like we don't have support. We don't have monetary support being handed out this year because I know the last Olympics, we were coming off COVID, and I knew if it was not for the money we got from the adults and athletes' money, it would have been a mess. So we did get that money. We did get that support. But this year, there, there's been no support, right? And I feel like that's what we need. We need monetary support being handed out and handed out on time not a month to the Olympics and the media carries out that they pay money. We need the money on time because you have people practice, people preparing for the Olympics since September. Most people are out of funds now, right? We are the African Games. We still not received out. We don't even know if we're going to get our grants. So 
we have there are money issues that are being laid out that people are everyone is whispering and the minister and everyone is saying they're going to get paid but we are not seeing any money we do know we'll get paid that's what we know for now the money is going to come we hang on to that faith but the thing is the money needs to be on time it's bet it's early it needs to be early because once it's early people can prepare we can have things being done we can see our physios we can get treatments we need we can take care of ourselves well and settle our bills but if you bring this money a month to the olympics you're not going to prepare a month to the olympics and win a gold medal so that's what i just want i think the federation should be on time and step it up with their preparations and place its priorities right now now is now is not the best time because other countries are already preparing like team canada is already they had they were in the florida relays this weekend mm. they already ran a team we had the all african game so we did have a chance to run a team so that's a good preparation but we need further preparations mm. right and that's what i would say it's we need they need preparations with and they need to be on time not at the last minute mm. last minute is not going to get the job done this year well, no more questions? Oh, well, I, I have to ask this other question as well. Um, I mean, you, of course, like I said, you're amongst one of Nigeria's finest crop of um, athletes, sprinters right now. But, but the, before you all came on the scene, there were some before you, the likes of DJ Liu uh, and, and the other ones uh, who, who also did brilliantly well. What kind of support have you received from these um, stars of uh, who, who were before you? Yeah, it's good. Like... I'm all the way down in Canada. I'm the solo man in Canada, and I'm kind of far from everybody. So I say people try to reach me, and they do give me words of advice, words of support. I know I get a lot of support from people. They reach out to me, and the words of encouragement do go a long way, affirmation, right? And people keep telling me this and that and how to improve and how to get it done. So I feel like... The ex-athletes, they are pre doing pretty good with mentoring. Their mentorships have, have been really okay. And I can't really say much about that, but the ones I've interacted with, I think I have a good relationship with them. Okay. Pasuba is a good guy. Mm. Deji is a good guy. outside the African Games. So I think they're pretty good people. Okay. But fantastic. Finally, before I let you go, um, I mean, your, your personal best still stands at 10.02. And a lot of people, I including, believe that you know, you, you should probably be hitting 10.99, 10.98 uh, by now. W is there a possibility that we might see you do that this year? Oh, you mean 9.98 or 9.8? Yeah. I, I don't know. I don't know if I'll hit it this year because last year I ran 10.02 twice and I hmm. ran it once in 20, 2019. Yeah. Hmm. So I've run 10.02 three times now and. I'm just, you know, I'm just going with the flow. For now, I think majorly just get the job done. Maybe the time will come. I've gone around chasing the time. It's not there. So I don't want to get it in my sight. So now probably just probably get some good honors to my name and just keep going with the flow. Let's see how this is in plays out. I don't want to overthink it. And yeah, hopefully. But I do need to run a nine to be in, to be in Paris. Mm. Well, we'll keep our fingers crossed. Positive mindset. It's going to come, positive mindset is going to come, but just the most important thing is getting the job done okay. when it matters the most. Most definitely, getting the job done and staying injury-free. Ushari Sheh, Isher Kiri, it has been an honor having you on the show tonight. Thank you so much. I want to wish you all the very best uh, as the season progresses, and hopefully, hopefully, uh, there might be a podium place for you at the Olympic Games. But thank you so much for your time. All right, thank you. Thank you. Well, uh, guys, it was, uh, it's, it's always very nice to hear from the horse's mouth. And oh, yeah, I think that was a brilliant question that you asked. These athletes have always talked about the fact that the funding needs to come when it needs to come, yeah. not a month or two weeks before. There was a couple so we went to that. I think the athletes got um, the, their, their grants a mm -hmm. month before, or maybe it was a few days before they were supposed to leave. And I'm asking myself, how is... I don't know about you guys, but I'm, I'm just, I'm just you know, flabbergasted. You know, sometimes I, I think we sound like a cracked record because mm -hmm. we've been saying the same, all, the same thing you know, over the past one decade, 20 years ago. It's still the same old story. Nothing has changed. Mm -hmm. And I was I, I, in Ghana. I, was, I talked to about, some, um, about seven or eight federation presidents, post federation presidents, and it's still the same issue. You see, we always keep on you know, talking about Nigerian spirits. We can only do that on the continent. 
on the African continent. Mm. No, when you go when to, you to leave the, the global African stage, continent. you'll be found it, out. It's even difficult for countries like Egypt that you know have been you know internal uh, the, the winners of the African Games. You know, so if it's difficult for Egypt, then you, do, you, can, you can begin to think what will happen to us at the Olympic Games. And what he said was just a summary of what they have. Before we came on there, uh, I was telling you about uh, the sports committee, the House of Rep sports committee, yeah. lamenting that um, the team Nigeria athletes have not been paid their allowances, you know, wow. after the African Games. Wow. So, you know, these are the issues. And, you know, you know, some of these athletes, like footballers, they want to make names for themselves. Mishekiri um, is in Canada now. You know, all other athletes too who are still here are aspiring to go outside the country. Mm. You know, that's their target. And that's why they, they endure, they tolerate all the incompetence, you know, you know administratively, so that um, they have the opportunity of showcasing what they are able to do and get scholarship or get us out and get grants and, yeah. get grants mm. and you know, do well for themselves. But it's, 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 really, it's really shameful. It's poor. And yeah. We can't continue like this. No, we honestly can't. But the sad part is that we will continue to say this and hopefully something something will happen someday. Uh, let's leave athletics behind and let's tell you that some great boxing action happened over the weekend. One happened yesterday in the United States of America at the O2 Arena. Heavyweight rivals uh, Fabio Wardley and uh, Fraser Clark, they met yesterday. It was a titanic slugfest. Both of them could not be separated after 12 rounds. And it was scored a draw. One, one judge scored it 114 113 in favor of Wardley. Another had it 115 112 in favor of Clark. But crucially, the third judge had it at 113 113. And this was particularly crucial because Fraser Clark actually had a point deducted during this fight for a low blow. That would have swung it in his favor, and he's been screaming to the high heavens that he wants a rematch. Uh, of course, uh, uh, Wardley uh, is the defending uh, Commonwealth and British heavyweight champion, while uh, Fraser Clark uh, is a 2021 Olympic uh, Games bronze medalist. Still talking uh, <laughs> some boxing now, and of course, a lot of you people, a lot of people know uh, this man. We're talking about none other than uh, New Zealand heavyweight. Um, Joseph. Joseph Parker. Joseph Parker has been in the news in the last uh, few uh, few months. First, upsetting uh, Deontay Wilder in that uh, clash in uh, Saudi Arabia before beating Big Bang Zile Zhang as well. He's put his name firmly back into the reckoning for the heavyweight title. And now he's been doing something interesting. He's been calling out this man, Dillian White. Both of them fought just a few years ago. And the Dillian White earned a, a unanimous points decision, but uh, on, the, on the back of his two Excellent performances. Joseph Parker has been calling out Dylan White in the most unique fashion. Let's take a listen to this. We're going to break. I'll be right back with more on Game On. Thank you so much for staying tuned. You're still uh, watching the Game On here on New Central Television. I have to confess, I have some really mischievous producers and, of course, directors. But uh, they are what, who make the show go on. And, yeah, they're worth the trouble. Uh, let's quickly move on now and talk about some football now. Matches were played in the State FA Cup Finals all across Nigeria. Let's quickly bring you up to speed with those results as they come in. Yes, there you go. In Aqua Ibom, it was Aqua United defeating FC 1 Rocket 1-0. In Anambra, Edo United lost 0-1 to Solution FC. In Benway, Lodi Stars have beaten, uh, defeated Flight FC of Boko 2-1 in Delta State Warriors were 2 0 better than Delta Marines in Eboni. Sinosher uh, defeated PCM 5-3 on penalties after full time ended 1-1 in Edo State. One stars fell 3-1 to, to better insurance in AKT. AKT United uh, also lost by five uh, goals uh, two on penalties uh, to AKT United feeder teams after regulation time ended 1-1. In Gombe United, the battle of uh, Gombe, it ended 3-0 in favor of Doma United over Gombe United. That was 3-0 on penalties after regulation time finished goalless. In Imo State, it was FR Eburwaja uh, losing 1-2 to Ikuko, Ikukomas FC. Ikukoma. Uh, Ikukoma. Thank you. Um, the big question for me is where, where, where was Hartland FC in that mix? Anyway, in Kwara... They lost in the semi final. They lost in the mm. semi final. Thank yeah. you. Uh, in Kwara State, it was Kwara United defeating ABS 2-1. Katina United uh, also defeated JN Damburam 2-1 in the final as well. In Kaduna, the Army team, Green Berets, defeated Semo Iben Football Academy 2-0. In Kebi State, it was Kebi United losing 0-1 to Discovery Football Academy. In Lagos, it was Ikorodu Football Club, Ikorodu City Football Club, one of the new kids on the block, defeating Inter Lagos. Another new kid on the block by two goals to nothing in Nasara State. Nasara United uh, lost 5-4 on penalties to FC Basira after it ended 1-1 in regulation time. In uh, Niger State, Niger Tornadoes uh, defeated Niger Tornadoes feeder teams 1-0. In Nodo State, 
Adam Imogo lost 2 0 to Sunshine Stars. In Oshu State, Oshu United defeated Hamola FC 1 0. In Oyo State, Ilaji FC upset Shooting Stars 5 4 penalties after regulation time ended 3 3. It was one hell of a match, according to those who watched it. Uh, we'll be bringing you, hopefully, we'll be bringing you uh, some news from Ilaji FC who uh, basically turned to giant killers in the final. And in the final of the Plateau State FA Cup, uh, Plateau United defeated Mighty Jets. 4-1 on penalties after regulation time ended 1-1. And in the Federal Capital Territory, it was EFCC and Sporting Supreme playing out a 2-2 draw. I think Sporting Supreme winning that one. To the continent now, CAF Champions League games were played as well. Uh, let's show you the results of those games uh, in far away Tanzania. It was Simba uh, losing 1-0 to Al-Ali, perennial continental champions by a lone goal. Al-Ali take a 1-0 lead to Cairo in the second leg next weekend. Elsewhere in Lubumbashi, uh, TP Mazembe played at a goalless draw with Petro Atletico of Luanda. Now, that team, you have to put your eyes on them. They have not conceded a single goal in seven matches in the CAF Champions League. Throughout the entire group stage, they did not concede any. Right now, they still haven't conceded any. That's seven matches without their defense being breached. They might go on to become the first African team to win the CAF Champions League without conceding a single goal. That would be one hell of a record. Elsewhere in uh, Tanzania as well, Young Africans and the Mamelodi Sundowns played as a goalless draw, while Esperance, the blood and gold of Tunisia, played as a goalless draw with Asek Mimosa uh, in Rades. To the CAF Confederations Cup now, Rivers United uh, were one nil better than defending champions USM Olja, one nil in the match played in Uyo. Uh, Rivers United huffed and puffed but could not uh, get another goal, the insurance goal, as we like to call it. Uh, so that game is still very much in the balance. Elsewhere, Stad Malian lost 2 1 at home to Dreams FC. It was a nightmare for Stad uh, Mal uh, Stad Malian at home. Uh, Dreams FC are from Ghana, by the way. Abu Salim of Libya played at a goalless draw with RSV Berkan, while Future FC lost 2-1 to falling giants Zamalek in the battle of the Egyptians. Well, moving on very quickly now, still talking about uh, football, but to women's football now, and uh, we can tell you that everything is already heating up in Nigeria here ahead of that first leg between the Super Falcons of Nigeria and defending champions of the Africa Women's Cup of Nations, the Banyana Banyana. The Banyana Banyana actually got a town before the Super Falcons. That shows you just how serious they are. They're taking this one. They're in town. Coach Desiree Ellis and her team touched down in Abuja on Sunday, brimming with confidence. Of course, South Africa defeated Tanzania 4-0 on aggregate to set up a clash against the Super Falcons of Nigeria. That first leg comes up at the Moshud Abiola Stadium uh, in Abuja on Friday, the 5th of April, while the reverse fixture is, will take place on Tuesday, the 9th of April, at the Loftus Vestal Stadium in Pretoria. And the winner over both legs will advance to the Paris 24, 2024 Olympic Games. Uh, of course, the other tickets will be contested between Zambia and Morocco. Meanwhile, uh, regarding Nigeria, coach Randy Waldron has also joined the uh, fray as well. He arrived in Nigeria today alongside team captain Rashida Ajibade as well. Some players will also be coming in tonight. Uh, the, most of them will be coming in tomorrow, while striker uh, Sister Tushwala is expected to join up on Thursday as well, uh, ahead of what promises to be a crucial, crucial game. Well, speaking about that game, joining us now uh, from Polo Kwane in South Africa is... Uh, well, I say football journalist extraordinaire, Lethabo Nyango. Uh, she joins us uh, from South Africa. Thank you, Lethabo. It's an absolute pleasure to, uh, to have you on the show. And I do not think South Africa can take this game any more seriously than they already have. Arriving in Nigeria before the Nigerians, wow, you guys are taking this game seriously. <laughs> good evening and uh, good evening to your viewers and thank you for having me a nice welcome you're making me sound like a very important person but yes this match is of high importance to south africa as much as it is as important to nigeria i would assume that having missed out on the last um you know olympic games banyana banyana we want to go, you know, South Africa wants to go back there. And also you look at how we've been doing on the international stage, the history that we made last year, the World Cup, getting into the second round. That's a feat that no, no South African team has ever achieved at a World Cup, men or women. So you want to, as soon as, you know, the, the, the tournaments are following each other to, 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 to maintain that momentum. So it is a serious match. Hmm. Oh, yeah. you have it is a serious match. I've always said that the Banyana Banyana are the bane of the Super Falcons. And I'm hoping that um, they will not um, deprive uh, the Falcons a ticket again to the Olympics. 
It's good to know that um, Code Desiriel is, has, um, you know, a boost in camp, the return of Bambanani, Sibulile, and also Rifolio Jane. But she's without and delayed Lamini. Do you think this um, should bring a cost for worry? No, I don't think so. If you look at the South African team and of recent, um, Kaylin Swart has been, you know, more peaked in terms of starting. Mm -hmm. they've, they've both had like sort of like equal opportunity, but if not so equal opportunity. Remember, there was even an uproar in South Africa during the World Cup when Andile was not playing and everybody was like, why isn't Andile playing? But this time we also know the coaches say that it's because of medical reasons. But you look at Kaylin Swart, how she's been playing, you know, uh, uh, as number one, uh, Banyana, Banyana number one. So I don't think that that should be a thing to worry about. Rigel was also, uh, one of the goalkeepers was also at the WAFCON as well. So in case anything happens and hopefully nothing bad happens to either of them, that shouldn't be so much of a big concern. I think for South Africa, this is South Africa versus Nigeria. It's mm. not an Andy Legamini or Elita Wahanya or versus the Super Falcons. Mm. Is there an undertone uh, why um, does it really should not field Andy Legamini? Yes, I noticed that at the World Cup, she was not fielded at all for the Banyana Banyana at the posts. So looking at this game against Nigeria, I know that Kaylin Swart was um, the, the girl at the post when Nigeria faced up with um, South Africa at the Aisha Buari Cup. So is that on the term not fielding and delay? Is that a problem why and no, delay? Is not that the reason all. why there she's is not no here? Yeah, there is no undertone at all. I'm saying right now she's not in camp because of medical reasons. But even when she wasn't playing, whether at the World Cup and even in some of the qualifying matches, it would be Andile, it would be Kaylin, if you checked that uh, properly. But there is no undertone. It's a competition issue in, in, in the South African team. Also, you look even how they were doing domestically. You know, before the World Cup, Kaylin had had more game time in the league than Andile had had. So it, there is no undertones on that one. Okay. 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 You have yeah, a my, my my questions are very simple. There are actually, two questions. And um, the first one is, I remember some years ago. Actually, I covered the the African Women uh, Nations Cup in Namibia in twenty, I think in twenty fourteen. Yeah, twenty fourteen. And um, we defeated the Bayana Bayana of South Africa. You know, on route winning the that tournament. And you know, along the line, the the Bayana, Bayana evolved. They 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 grew. Uh, they were so consistent. What did this did Safa do, you know, to ensure that uh, South Africa got at the same level with Nigeria? Then, secondly, my second question is: Are we not hard done that the two best teams on the continent allegedly, allegedly, allegedly. yeah, allegedly because Peter they did well at the World Cup yeah. and um, Bayana Bayana are the defending champions of the African Women Nations Cup. Do you feel bad that these two teams, you know, mm -hmm. should have so, been separated? Somebody has to go. You know, somebody mm -hmm. has to go. You know, do you, do you, how do you feel about it? Uh, with your second question, I feel the same way as you do feel. I feel they should have been not been drawn in the same group, you know, because like you're saying, two of the best teams, uh, one number one ranked uh, Super Falcons, South Africa is second. Um, they are the current reigning uh, 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 national team in terms of women care for wise. You have the best player as well. They're the best goalkeeper. South Africa has the best coach, you know, in terms of, I'm, I'm just referring to the to the CAF Awards, you know, and then you look at the rankings as well. These are the two teams that you would wish, I would wish that both of them could get a chance to fight, you know, if the draw was not the way it was, you have South Africa on the other end and you have Nigeria on the other end because for me, I feel this is a good representation of African women's football in these two teams. Uh, yeah, I do feel hard done that only one of them can go. Uh, yeah, it really does not sit very well with me but what can we do it is what it is we're here there's 120 minutes for one of them to get that ticket to to paris but coming to your uh, your first question what did they do i think that the team had been together for a very long time like um, and it just matured in terms of if you look let's take it back to before desiree ellis was the head coach when she was acting as well around about 2016 when we played uh, nigeria in the wafcon semi-finals in cameroon and then you look at the next edition, we were able to beat Nigeria once, uh, that was in Ghana, we were able to beat Nigeria once, and then we lost in that final, though that booked us our very first um, 
World Cup appearance in 2019. Then you look at Aisha Buhari Cup. You look at, at, at the WAFCON. But if you look at all of those players, most of the players that were part of that 2016 team are still part of this team. So it's been a lot of maturity. You could say that some of them were still young and then they were growing with that. And then even now, when you look at what Desiree Ellis has been able to do, and especially if you look at last year, the, the injuries to the key players like Rufilo Jani and Bamba Nanibani made opportunities for young blood to come into the squad. You look at the Fikile Magamas, you know, you look at Karabo Kamini, they're in the back line, and now they are they are toe-to-toe they are, they are -to -toe with, with the regulars, you know. And then you even look up front, that it looks like the, the technical team or even the association, they together in, in terms of saying, they couldn't you can't wait to have a problem like prevention is better than cure. so mm -hmm. when you have a chance in in terms of knowing the longevity of the team you look at someone like interesting my chia she's young she's one of our strikers she's young uh she got to play in the wafcon when tim bihatlana got injured so if we had not had that kind of a succession plan already there might have been problems you know but also she's part of the squad mm -hmm. she's part of the squad together with the contingent from, from, from Mexico. Our front line is playing in, in, in Mexico. Jermaine, Tembi, uh, our breadwinner, uh, Hilda Makaya. So I think the succession, the succession plan that they had together, I think that's something that is working because every now and then you see new blood. Asanda Hadebe is like, you see new blood being brought in, but they're not being brought in. And then they've been now, it's a situation of sink or swim when there's already a problem. So before mm. there is a problem, they've been already working on that to prevent it. Okay. Okay, Nathawa, thank you so much for joining us tonight. Uh, I, I honestly believe that uh, be, being African champions has put, in, uh, put a different spin, a, a different swag uh, in, the, in the steps of the Bayana Bayana. They play like champions, they act like champions, and I think it's actually made them more dangerous. But finally, before we go, uh, speaking as a journalist now, not as a Bayana Bayana Uber <laughs> supporter that you are, who, who, who do you think will win this one over two legs no but come on you can't say i can't speak as a south african <laughs> obviously i'm biased towards south africa no let's be honest you can't sit there and tell me you don't want to go to paris for this okay okay i'm not saying that so who do you think will win yeah so these are national team matters so definitely i am biased towards south africa patriotic to the hills and with how banyana banyana have been playing and with how the team has progressed I want to give them a shot. Obviously, it's not going to be an easy match. It's not going to be a walk in the park. These are the Super Falcons, the most decorated national team, women's national team on the African continent. They're most successful. You guys have nine titles, you know. Despite that we unseated you at the last WAFCON, you still are the Super Falcons. But with how Banyana Banyana have been playing, I'm going to be patriotic, but it's not just out of patriotism. It's also based on having seen how we've been playing, you know. I mean, you look at even at the beginning of the year, our league had not started when we were already playing in friendlies, already playing in qualifiers, actually. We were playing in the qualifiers earlier in the year. Our league okay. had not started. Looking at our league, look, knowing the girls, you know, and, and how hard they work, and the team itself, because also there's something about Banyana Banyana, the belief in that team, it's something that you can't even take away from them. But it's not just the belief, it's what they put out on the pitch. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to give South Africa a shot to go through because also I'd like to go and answer the, to Paris. Okay. You know what? I, I think I'm going to agree with you. I'm going to agree with you. Uh, and hopefully we can go to that Olympic Games together, you and I. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Letabo uh, Yago, joining us already from Polokani, South Africa. It's been a pleasure having you on the show. And hopefully, uh, when uh, South Africa do qualify, or don't qualify, we'll definitely have you again in the studio to speak about that. But thank you so much, Letabo. Uh, thank you very no, much. No, we have 120 minutes to settle this. I do, I do totally Friday, agree. Pretoria next Tuesday. Okay. Then we can decide who is now going to be saying, ah, uh, flight mm. tickets, how much is it from... Or Tambo, or how much I'm, is it? I'm, look, I will come to our Tambo and we can fly together. No problem. <laughs> I, I have no problem with that. Thank but you. But either Thank way, you whoever's going there will be a good representation of uh, African women's football. I believe that I this picture that is going to give us one of the, the, the best okay. that Africa has to offer. Okay. Thank, thank you very much, Tambo. Have a wonderful evening. We'll definitely be speaking to you in due course. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Good evening. Guys, uh, we have to uh, move on very quickly. I'm pretty much run out of time. Let's quickly tell you this. Uh, uh, I'm not going to ask for your comments, but just know that if you see me in Paris, just know I'm going to support women football, be it South African or Nigerian. 
I don't want You're to hear supporting this. women football. I'm supporting a woman. I, I, I don't know what to say. Uh, anyway, let's uh, tell you that uh, some Turkish Super, Super League views, Bright or Sai Sabo, our own very own UFC footballer, and two of his uh, teammates will face uh, a panel, uh, that's a, quote, a disciplinary panel with the Turkish Football Federation following that bust up uh, with, trans with Trabzon Sport fans uh, last, month, uh, last week. Home supporters invaded the pitch at Trabzon Sport Stadium after the final whistle, and uh, so, uh, Brad Osai Samuel actually punched one of the supporters mm -hmm. who ran onto the pitch and his uh, teammate, Dutch defender Jaden Oswald, was accused of kicking the same supporter. A third player will also appear before the disciplinary body, uh, disciplinary body along with two club employees for fighting. Uh, that was actually a football match, not UFC. Let's quickly give you results from the English Football League that happened this weekend. Uh, yes, so was Newcastle United winning a thrilling game against West Ham United by four goals to three. Burnmouth defeated Everton 2-1. Chelsea could not hold on to their lead against Burnley. That game ended 2-2. Nottingham Forest played the one out over Crystal Palace. And of course, uh, those are the results. But the big game happened yesterday. Uh, Liverpool defeated Brighton 2-1. While Manchester City and Arsenal played out a goalless draw. Many thanks to you guys uh, in the studio. Onye, thank you. Always having a, a pleasure having you on the show. And um, of course, Oye uh, Wichimachuku. Thank you for coming through, and thank you to everyone behind the scenes who made this possible. But before we go, uh, let's tell you that uh, throughout history, sportsmen have done different things uh, to avoid being in trouble with the police. But in October 2016, uh, <laughs> Ecuadorian international striker Ena Valencia pretended to be injured while playing for Ecuador against Chile so he could escape from the police. Yeah. Yeah, Ecuador actually won that game 3-0, but bizarrely, the game came to a close, and uh, the player faked an injury. Uh, so that he could escape from the policeman. Reports uh, surfacing online said that Valencia was in trouble with the law for not paying $17,000 in child support for his five-year-old daughter. Police tried to arrest him, but uh, the, you know, his team, they pretended, no, that he's not feeling, he's not in good shape. They rushed him into the ambulance. Into the ambulance. They rushed him to the uh, hotel, hospital as well, but they just managed to, he managed to escape the police, so all by pretending to be injured. Incredible. <laughs> Absolutely incredible. Many thanks be, uh, to you guys once again for joining us. Uh, Game On makes a return tomorrow. My name is Papa Tunde Koiki. Wish you a pleasant night. Uh, we'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.